Hey everyone, I just thought I'd do a small sort of a video on how we actually press up this aluminium. I've gone back to the old conventional way where I'm not using the log splitter. I'm finding it a lot easier and quicker instead of lifting it when it gets heavier and heavier and up and down, up and down out of the log splitter. Because um, I was using the log splitter as a press to press it all down. Now, I'll just show you a few things that I have been doing. We just grab it, chuck it in the old press here. It, what I've made, made this up myself. Uh, put a couple of wings on it and that sort of thing. I don't even use those wings no more. Um, just use them for picking them up, putting it straight in. So we just grab a whole heap of aluminium. I find this the quicker way than anything. Especially when you're just starting off with a new block. All the bottle top necks, wine bottle top necks and all that sort of thing. They just go straight and you pound it down. Pound it down. And also, welcome back to our everyday living area. Uh, what I also do... Well, no, you're not falling over. I've got a mess to pick, pick up over there. So I also do this too. With all the wine bottle necks, I do put it inside. Geez, I didn't take that plastic out of there. Look at that. I'll just put that in the trash bin. That's why we've got one there. And I actually leave it inside because sometimes it does fall out of it when you take it out. So just pound it down, pound it down. That's all I do. More, I've got a whole heap there, chuck it inside it. Put it inside. It's gonna hold together better, especially when I put it up in here. It doesn't take long to create a block. All the cans that don't go through, go through this as well. I think that it's aluminium that I want pressed up, I'll put it through this. We, all we do is we just keep going, keep going. See, that's nearly that whole bin done. It does not take long at all. Just a small time to collecting it. You just hang on to a whole heap of it. Till you got a fair bit of it. And you spend half an hour, 45 minutes, pressing it up. So all it takes, it doesn't take long at all. Right, that'll do that part. And then all I do is I lift it up. That's why I've got the, still got the wings on it, I haven't cut them off. Because I was, what I was doing is I was putting it in, why, putting it up here, and I had to actually have the, the plate, the top plate, which is down here. Um, I had to strap it down so none of it fell out and then I had to strap this to that. It was a lot of rigmarole. So I've gone back to the old conventional way. This way here makes life so much easier for me. It's all a sitting down job. And I've replaced the original 9 tonne jack with a 20 tonne. So I can get more force, pressing force. So we use the red handle, that's our limitation, because the original handle is this big heavy one. <coughs> Excuse me. And it doesn't matter if we've got a bit of an overlap on the outside. We just press it down, 
that's all we've got to do now. Push it down. What's happened on that side? Nothing. It's not catching. I've just got to watch that with it going on a different angle here that it doesn't pop out. When this piece was made, which I didn't make it, I actually bought this piece myself, um, the press itself, with the original jack, which is somewhere around here. Um, yeah. They didn't, I don't think they made that part there long enough in width. Bit ridiculous, but anyway, that's the way the, the th press is. But anyway, we just push it down. That eventually levels out. It is slow, but very, very safe. It'd be all right if I could press a button and a hydraulic ram would go down and push it down. That'd be awesome. But uh, you do what you can with what you've got. If one arm's quicker than the other, that's the way you do it. All right, that's right down. We just let that back up now, and we press it down more. See, what we do here, take these out, take that one out, Another reason why I'm not putting it all the way in with these wings in here, um, meaning that these wings used to go in here when I'm pressing it up. Uh, this used to stay in there and it was a bit of a pain where I couldn't actually get it in and out all the time. But I've, another reason why I've left the wings on, on, on this is so when we undo the bottom plate on here, because um, it's got held on by four bolts. This piece down here comes away and we've got pins that actually, these pins here, that actually hold the whole thing up so that these wings actually sit on those pins. So I'm just going to fix this for a second. It's a bit uneven, so it's the advantage of doing it this way too. I just don't like the look of it at the moment. It just looks a bit unsafe and unlevel. So I'm just pressing one side down. Only so far. Not a lot of pressure. To make it a bit easier for me. That to there. Lay that down, push it back over. Stand that back up. Stand it up on an angle like so. Uh, yep, that to there. Okay, that way. A diagonal. What are you doing? What are you doing? No. It's going to want to blow out on me. I have had this, actually. I've got a couple of videos of this blowing out. I think there's one where the whole thing... I actually forgot to take one of the pins out and it got caught underneath that. And that whole thing flew out and all that sort of jugger. So, yeah. Can be unsafe. Go that way, go that way. Got to think about how you do it. It's up crooked. Bang the bottom across. No pressure on that at the moment. that try and prevent it doing what it wants to do yep, it's gonna do that okay 
It's a good thing that you can adjust a lot of this as you're going. I could put more aluminium in and press it down that way too, but I want to get it down further first. It is very finicky, and I mean very, very finicky. If you're not observing on what you're doing, um, yeah, we'll try that way. Try that way. This is why I don't create too many videos of this, because it's very slow, time consuming. That is a bit on, on a lean this way, so I'm stepping out of the road. Being 20 ton jack, you just never know what could happen. It might level out. I've just got to watch over here, see if that goes the other way. Not much pressure there at all. Because I started off with almost nothing in the bottom. So this should all press a long way down before I have to worry about it. starting to level out because it's compressing this side as well as the other side the other side was higher so that's making it a little, lot better All right, go to a different handle the original handle that goes with it a bit more force Got to stop there because that's just about out. I think we'll just put some more in there. That'd be the go. Sit down there. Alright. Yeah, that's going down a long way in there. A hellish and long way. That could go down further. Pretty good. Anyway, we'll keep going here. I got this bag to go and the little bit that I spilt over there. So it's just as simple. Chuck more in, pound more down. Now these are the cans that didn't go through the machine. Well, they could have went through, I suppose. No, the barcode's torn. So if you've got some crushed up cans and you want to put it through as a, a, a block and things like that because we get actually a, I think it's about a dollar ten for um, crushed stuff as a block per kilo that is so that's not too bad I, I like those odds I like the pricing too Better than getting 90, 90 cents a kilo. Right, I'm just going to empty that into that. Get some of it out of there. Less chance of that bag falling over. I'll lay it down anyway. Oh, we've got sardine, tins, all that sort of thing in here. All go through. They're all aluminium. <clears throat> Squash it down. A little four pound hammer, I think. What is it? Yeah, a little four pound hammer with a long handle. It's not much. You can have as big a hammer as you want or as small as you want, but I reckon the bigger you got, 
as long as it fits in a piece of RHS, big square tubing. Um, yeah, and that's why I picked that one because it's got the long handle. It doesn't jar my hands or anything like that. Doesn't matter if you've got a pocket down the side, it's eventually going to spread out. I've actually found that out by doing it this way. Put that in the bottom there. Got a whole heap of these bottlenecks. Pull that in there for a second. This is what I was talking about earlier. Just roll it up. And pound it down. Now we don't own this place, we don't pay to be here or anything because I work here. Um, it's just, you know, we got the job and I'm actually allowed to use the shed in a way where I've got to keep it tidy, things like that. But um, sometimes it gets a bit out of hand and they say, well look, you got to clean it up and things like that. So that's why we do a lot of these um, videos like this. Uh, to show what we actually do to clean up around here. Shed's never tidy anyway. I'll vouch for that one. You always bring a scrap in and things like that. So I've actually got someone helping me out. I might press that down so that, that way I can concentrate on working around doing my job and someone else can help me do and can be doing um, all the scrapping and stuff but I thought I'd pop on I did say I'd try and do a video of this so I thought oh, I'll come down while no one's around no boats or anything like that because it is a ski club here we are here um, to get this video out for you There was only one advantage with doing it with the log splitter over here that I made up the, where I had to strap it down, things like that. Um, it was a little bit quicker, but lifting it in and out, in and out, and in and out, that was what was getting me. So I, that's why I pulled back this way. I think I've already explained that. Not as young as I used to be. Starting to feel it. We all get that way. Right, I didn't get the extra one there, so we'll put that one underneath it. <sighs> Might do it a bit different. Can we? Leave those out. Yes, I can. Put that up on its edge. That way round. As long as the chain doesn't get caught. The chain's there for if the uh, and piece of aluminium gets caught between the edge and the plate, say all the way around. I've got a lever up here somewhere um, that I actually grab onto the chain and put it down the ground and pull it out.
change handle, it's getting a bit hard. Oh, that's a lot easier. More leverage. Get the leverage going. See, that's also pressing what I've already put in there as well. Like the first press. First push down, I could say. That's going down nice and even. Let's see if we can stand that up on its end and go again. Start off with the small one. This is just an ordinary press. El Chico Harbor Freight, you can say Harbor Freight, um, or super cheap here in Australia. That's all this is. I've just modified the top ring here for this jack to fit in. That's all I've done. Nothing major. You just gotta know your limitations on what everything is capable of. Like yourself. We all push ourselves to the limit. We're gonna get up here. That's getting hard. That's going down nicely. I haven't had a pin break either yet. Touch wood. Do that. Could probably go down further, but I'm not going to try to. I should be able to fit all of this in, no problems whatsoever. Push that up. Just gets heavier and heavier. One block, like one block of aluminium, can add up to about six, seven kilos. So if you're getting say a dollar, dollar ten, dollar fifteen a kilo, um, yeah, it's all good. You can do the math on how much it'd be. Probably looking, oh, where's it? Say so you got seven kilos. We'll go, we'll go even numbers, six kilos, so that's six dollars, six dollars sixty a, uh, a block. It's not too bad. Get off me. What takes the time up is actually pushing it down, up and down all the time. That's what takes most of the time up. As you've probably just noticed this is why you try and push as much in as possibly can still got that bag to go so what I'll do is I'll bring us back when I'm just about finished on this bag, I've cleaned that up, and then I'll take us around the, out the back there and show you what they actually look like when I take them out of this. So I'll bring us back shortly. Right, well I've got down so far here, um, I've only got a little bit left, so I thought I'd bring us back along, show you what process I'm up to. 
Done the bag. It's only been, oh, probably about 10 minutes to finish this off. Doesn't take long. Yeah, about 10 minutes. No, I've had to go and do other things and help Brad out. He's back here with us, helping out. Right, so we've got it like that. This is our last push down. I don't need to hammer it, hammer it down with the hammer. I can just push that in there like so. We can put it up in the press. I did have a bit of a malfunction with the old press off camera. Had to fix that too, so that's all in the time frame as well. So, might be about 15 minutes. We'll go this way with that. This goes with this. This goes with that. That was best and less, Dad, wouldn't it? All those old dads I still remember. Like, slip, slop, slap, slop on some sunscreen, slop on some hats. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, this is how, this is the last press up. We've got things falling off the top. Oh, this is the bar that I was talking about earlier. Ha, there it is. Um, if the chain gets caught down inside, uh, not the chain, the, the plate gets caught down inside. Um, I haven't had it happen yet today. Yet today. So all I do is when it's down inside like it is there, pull that out of the road so you can all see. I grab the chain, when everything's out of the road of course, I hook it into the last hook, last loop, link I should say, hook, loop. Um, and then I put it, when it's far enough down, I lever it out when all of this is disassembled. Now I can't get it off. All right, go for the red handle. Red goes faster, doesn't it? I don't think so. It's what's under the hood, isn't it? Oh, it's not the driver, it's what's under the hood. And then it comes back to driver ability. Right, go to the other handle. So much easier, the other handle. Yeah, pretty close there. It's not going much over that side, so this tends to yeah. warp one way. Oh, I've got to stand up. <laughs> Move the chair out of the road. You can see I wore a couple of holes in there from parking my butt on it. I just got to watch that that doesn't pop out. You got to have a keen eye. Every millimetre counts. Right, I think that will almost do. Stretching the friendship. Mm. That'll do it. Right. It's a lot of pressure there, isn't there? Brad's still surprised on how I make things. Well, <laughs> you don't see many people. Well, you're the first one I've seen do that. I'm just lucky, mate. <coughs> I'm just lucky. I've always said that. Now, Oh geez, that's got heavy. Now that was a lot of aluminium. Bring the chair back, got to have a rest after that. Um, Cause that bin was full, the bag was full. I did spill a bit, picked it back up. Um, but yeah, I'll give you an example with this chain affair. Say that was stuck in there like so. Um, you hook it in like I was saying, and then you can pull it out like so if it's got stuff stuck down the side walls. Anyway, I'll take you out the back. That's how far down that's gone. It's about, oh, 
probably halfway so I could go a lot more yet and uh, yeah I'll take you out the back and show you what we've already got so this is what we actually pressed up already uh, we've got five blocks there probably estimation of mm, probably 15 20 kilos just sitting there there's a fair bit I do know some of the blocks only add up to about five kilos because they were a bit light and that sort of thing um, but anyway um, that's the uh, aluminium so with all of our other hoard that we do have we've still got a lot of compression motors here to pull apart we've got some motors down here that we're going to get the copper out of um, we've also got a uh, whole heap of insulated wire in there now when it comes to number two copper the it's got all the resonance stuff on it pop that over that way this is what we've got so far that'll be about a three-quarter bin if i squash that down um we have got underneath these fans that we did pick up and good old bunnies they all work i got them all working um i'll just lift this one off i think we've got in this blue bin i can't remember i think that's aluminium yes some aluminium wire so that's a starts for more aluminium wire uh, with little transformers and stuff underneath that fan there to pull apart still got all this hoard over the back here brad's actually trying to go and get through this all this week get it all sorted out we've got some tvs there extruded aluminium the whole lot uh got this deep breeze to finish off get the motor out of so anyway so if you've come this far in the video everyone don't forget to smash the like button on the video that way it helps the channel out and also helps the content of what we put out there and if you wish to subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell that way you get notified when we put a new video out so till next time everyone happy dumpster diving happy scrapping which we will be doing today and i'll see you in the next one cheerio, cheerio.